<clears throat> so um, I'm going to speak about uh, reverse proxy uh, in HTTPD and Tomcat. Um, basically, I will explain why we need a proxy. I will go through the different protocol, uh, IGP, HTTP 1.1, uh, HTTP 2, and some of the proxy stuff. I will show some configuration and um, I will make a short demo insisting uh, about the HTTPS and TSL proxying. Um, so I'm working for Red Hat. I've been, uh, I'm a long time committer uh, in Tomcat and I'm doing tons of stuff. <clears throat> so what is a proxy? The proxy is something between the application server and the internet. Basically, it's something between Tomcat and the internet. Uh, it can be used uh, as a load balancer. For example, we will have uh, two or three Tomcat and load balance uh, uh, them using a proxy. Uh, it also you, um, uh, allows failover. For example, it should be is going to be able to detect that one Tomcat is is uh, dead or hanging, and then uh, use the the other one instead. Um, it can be used to make some protocol termination stuff, uh, for example, uh, terminating uh, uh, the TLS or um, <clears throat> terminating um, one protocol uh, to do, for example, uh, uh, terminating HTTP uh, 2 and doing HTTP uh, 1.1 or uh, doing HTTP 3 uh, and um, uh, HTTP uh, 1.1. So basically, it's able to understand the protocol and its possible upgrades. So why do we need a proxy? We might need a proxy to control the load. Basically, we can limit the number of, uh, of connection uh, we're going to allow uh, to one Tomcat. Um, we can also use uh, the uh, proxy to save static pages, uh, for example, uh, images, uh, JavaScript. Um, we also can use it to control requests. Um, the, the most common uh, tool uh, in, that is used uh, usually in mode rewrite. With mode rewrite, you uh, basically can uh, uh, put a regular expression and uh, forbid the uh, uh, the, act, the proxying uh, of this URL. Uh, with mode security, you have tons of uh, different um, uh, rules uh, that you can use to prevent uh, uh, someone from the internet accessing to the server. Uh, you have a kind of dynamic configuration. Uh, for example, uh, mode balancer has some extension that allows you uh, to add dynamically a Tomcat uh, to a running HTTPD. Um, and mode cluster is uh, something that was done by Zbus in the past, and it's also allowed some uh, dynamic configuration. The proxy uh, we're going are mostly used to make protocol translation too, uh, like translating, uh, as I was saying, uh, HTTP 2 to HTTP 1.1, or, or uh, removing uh, the termination, uh, or doing the termination of uh, a TSL. So let's look to the different protocol we can use. The first one uh, is AGP. AGP is quite old. Uh, it has been there since Tomcat. It was there before Tomcat, telling the truth. Uh, it was in the project, come from a project named GSEV a long, long time ago. Uh, uh, it is easy to use. Basically, it is able to uh, forward uh, any information you need, like, for example, uh, the TLS. Uh, information. Uh, for example, uh, you can forward uh, the um, certificate. We'll read the certificate uh, in um, the uh, module uh, in HTTPD and send it uh, via text, unfortunately, to the Tomcat. Uh, it has a bunch of limitation. It's limited uh, because it does not have an upgrade. For example, uh, you can't uh, change the protocol with it. Uh, there's some limitation in the other size. It had to encryption, except you would uh, tunnel it. Uh, it has a limited authentication. Uh, basically, it uses a secret between uh, 
uh, AGDPD and uh, Tomcat. Uh, so this this is probably uh, something you you are okay to use inside a very safe uh, network, uh, but maybe not otherwise. And uh, we use uh, we can use AGP in uh, mod proxy AGP and in mod GK. When are we going to use HTTP or HTTPS? Uh, easily, uh, when there's uh, no TSL information to forward between HTTPD and the Tomcat. If we want to, if we want to use HTTPS or HTTP uh, between uh, HTTPD and Tomcat, then we can use the uh, SSL valve. I will uh, go more in detail. Uh, uh, about how to use the uh, SSL valves later. Um, why should we use HTTP or uh, HTTPS? Well, we might have to use HTTPS. For example, uh, if you have a banking application, uh, even inside the company, you probably don't want uh, this the information going uh, through the company network, uh, so you would uh, have you would like to have encryption between HTTPD and the Tomcat. The thing is, like if you are using HTTPS on both sides, uh, you're going to maybe use OpenSSL again in the Tomcat to make the uh, number crunching. And really, I would strongly advise you not to use uh, uh, HTTP simple. Uh, because it's unencrypted uh, and uh, definitively, I think uh, nowadays uh, you can't really trust uh, your internet. Another reason to use uh, HTTP or uh, over HTTP is that the HTTP connector are a lot more developed than the HTTP. HTTP is known of, of having had, uh, some quite problematic security feature, um, missing security feature in the past. For example, the secret was not um, uh, implemented in the past. Um, uh, some people were also running it on, on the internet, uh, which is probably not a good idea. So uh, this is one of the reasons why I would try to push the people uh, to move uh, to HTTP, uh, basically to HTTPS instead of HTTP. So uh, as we have, as I have said before, uh, we have uh, two ways to do uh, 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 the proxying uh, using uh, HTTPD, um, mod GK and mod proxy. So uh, this is a this is a test I've been doing a long time ago, uh, which is basically showing uh, the uh, uh, the performances of uh, mod GK, mod proxy HTTP and uh, mode proxy HTTP. Uh, this is not on using uh, encryption because to compare the stuff that are not on using encryption. So basically there's no encryption between uh, uh, HTTPD and Tomcat in this case. So because uh, uh, mode GK is using HTTP and mode proxy HTTP is using HTTP and those are not encrypted. So this is to compare the two. So we can see that uh, the, they both uh, they they are performing kind of the same way. Uh, that's the same if we look to the CPU usage. Uh, my test is a kind of like just a test where I'm trying to push as much uh, data through the network. Uh, so it's it's not really relevant on a real server, but it gives an idea that basically you you won't choose uh, the uh, performance difference uh, to to decide whether you use. Um, um, mod proxy or mod GK. So, as we have seen, there's no big difference uh, between mod proxy HTTP and uh, mod GK. Uh, in some cases, uh, uh, HTTP uh, looks more easy. You don't need a valve. Uh, but, okay, HTTP is not encrypted. Uh, this is probably something you want to take to stay away of it. Um, Another way of proxying the stuff is using uh, H2 in clear text, uh, name H2C. 
H2C is only for reverse proxy and it's supported uh, perfectly by HTTPD. Uh, the interesting, one of the interesting things is like basically you would rather uh, demultiplex H2 uh, in the proxy and that way you can uh, keep uh, the backend unchanged and keep the overhead of uh, decrypting, uh, of, decrypting, of uh, demultiplexing the frame um, in the proxy. I'm going to mention some other proxy, basically. Uh, HA proxy is uh, used in the cloud in uh, several places, like in OpenShift. Uh, mod cluster, mod cluster is basically a, con a kind of a small dynamic module on top uh, of the um, uh, Apache HTTPD uh, dyna dynamic load balancer. Uh, in the under two, I've been developing under two. This is a Shibos project. I've been uh, developing an under two proxy. Uh, this is uh, uh, quite seldomly used. I just mentioned it because I participated in the development in the past. Uh, you have ingress, uh, which is uh, basically uh, used um, in um, uh, in Kubernetes as well as in Genix and some uh, uh, other uh, software. You have a traffic server. Traffic server is uh, basically uh, uh, another uh, proxy uh, in the Apache Software Foundation. And you have Nginx. The proxy can be used to do, uh, you can proxy and use different kind of protocol. Uh, typically, uh, the proxy uh, uh, WebSocket tunnel, uh, or VS means web, WebSocket here in this, here in the slide. Ah, I should not click. Uh, so um, here, in fact, um, you can uh, configure the way you upgrade uh, the uh, the connection. And basically, uh, it's a tunnel. So after uh, you have established the connection, so after the upgrade have uh, occurred correctly, uh, you can proxy more or less what you want because you have a tunnel uh, between um, uh, your HTTP, Apache HTTP server and uh, the backend. In case of the Tomcat, uh, we don't care much, but uh, there's some example where the people are using uh, HTTP and uh, the GBOS remoting protocol. So, Proxy or no proxy? Well, if you want fell over, uh, you definitely uh, need a proxy. Uh, if you want to use H2 uh, and you have a old uh, Tomcat, uh, then uh, you're going to uh, you can do uh, you can use uh, a proxy. One of the things is like you must always remember that uh, when you uh, add demultiplexing a protocol and re resending the data to another protocol, that's tend to increase the risk of uh, making something wrong. Um, if you want to have a pure Java and use a TSL and SSL, uh, this is not a too bad solution. Even uh, you would have the connection between uh, HTTPD and Tomcat and encrypted in this case. You could use a uh, Unix socket in case you are on uh, Unix, well, on Linux, basically. Otherwise, in a lot of cases, if you have a simple uh, Tomcat application, you don't need to use a proxy because there's, there's, in fact, no really performance reason to use a proxy. So I'm going to ask, are there any questions at that point? There is a question. Um, why use AJP at all these days? <laughs> um, I think one of the reasons to use AJP is that some people just have it. Uh, there's no big advantage to uh, use AJP. Uh, it's known as being risky. Uh, the protocol is quite old. Uh, 
a 20 year old uh, protocol is probably something you don't want to use so there's no real good reason apart that uh, historical reason to use it that does that answer the question i think so any other question no please proceed okay then i'm going to proceed so uh let's let's look to a little to how you configure the stuff uh so this is a uh, this is a mod gk uh, configuration uh, basically you have uh, to load the uh, you have to load the mod gk module uh, you have to mount uh, one url uh, to the worker and you have to tell uh, httpd what well, mod gk why is going to find the configuration uh, for example this this is here the uh, worker conf uh, file uh, a classical uh, name and uh, this property file it's a property file because it's the way it's encoded uh, is going to define uh, how you uh, how you connect uh, uh, to the to, to the tomcat here we are in this example uh, we have uh, two tomcat uh, uh, clusters dev3 and cluster dev4 um, so basically um, you um, you list the workers here we have only one worker uh, it's a tip load balancer and uh, yeah, it had two workers um, and you define each workers telling the, that the type of the protocol uh, they're going to use AGP that's the only stuff we're supporting uh, you give the address of the uh, of the <clears throat> of the first uh, of the first uh, tomcat and the port on which it is running. This is the uh, normal uh, uh, AGP port. And you do the same for the other Tomcat, which, as you can see, is running on another uh, IP address. And those are internal numbers, uh, definitively. So don't avoid using uh, AGP outside uh, an internal network. Uh, now we look to the uh, mode proxy AGP configuration. Uh, in the case of the mode proxy, uh, we uh, uh, basically uh, tell it uh, tell HTTPD that he is going to ask to uh, load mode proxy, and in the in the mode proxy module, uh, we tell it to uh, uh, load uh, mode proxy AGP. Uh, here I have a, a an, an example with a balancer, which is more or less exactly the same balancing uh, shame that we have in the uh, mod gk one so that with on these two slides you can really compare uh, the configuration uh, so here yeah, i tell it that to use the uh, by request uh, balancing and uh, i i load the mode balancer and basically i'm going to de to to define my uh, proxy balancer uh, which is basically defining the two members uh they use the hp protocol and you can recognize the, the two addresses to ip and uh, i was using in the previous um, mojk example um, and both are running on the standard hp uh, port and you are you need a proxy pass uh, to tell uh, um, HTTPD that he has to uh, 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 redirect to a mod proxy uh, exactly to mode proxy balance uh, uh, this URL. So he's, yeah, in this example, uh, he's going uh, to uh, redirect everything uh, starting by TCAG uh, to the balancer. And now let's look uh, how we uh, uh, configure uh, the uh, uh, HTTP mode proxy. So basically, um, uh, there's HTTP D, the D yes, should be removed. Um, basically, uh, you're going to uh, uh, to load mode proxy. Uh, you're going to, to uh, load the uh, protocol for mode proxy. Uh, yeah, uh, HTTP. Uh, you're going to again tell it the load balancer method you want to use. Uh, 
you're going to tell uh, you want to use the balancer and you describe the balancer here uh, the, the, the same balancer as the previous example well, it's the AGP uh, balancer uh, and uh, you define the two members and the two members in fact here are the, the, the same host than I used in the previous uh, example in the previous slide uh, and uh, it's a Tomcat running on the standard port 8080 and you need a proxy pass to tell that uh, uh, the URL TCHP in this case is going to be uh, sent uh, to uh, the <coughs> uh, HTTP uh, balancer. If you want to use uh, H2 in clear text, uh, uh, basically bas you want to spare the uh, uh, the DSL termination uh, in Tomcat. Again, that's probably not the best idea. Um, you um, you have to configure your HTTPD uh, so that it is using um, uh, H2, loading the mode H2. Uh, you have to tell it to use H2 uh, or, or HTTP uh, 1.1, depending if the browser uh, is is supporting H2, all browsers are supporting H2, as I was telling it in my previous presentation. Uh, and uh, you have to load the proxy module. Uh, and uh, uh, you have to tell it to load the uh, uh, HTTP2 uh, proxy module. And then you have the proxy pass, which is going to be simple, simple, simply something like that. Proxy pass, DRL, and uh, the H2 and the port on which the Tomcat is running. Uh, not it is a different example here. Uh, uh, I have used a simple Tomcat. If you're using H2, uh, you have to configure the Tomcat to support H2, uh, which is quite easy. Uh, this is a, a clear text protocol. Uh, here I'm running it on port 8880. Uh, 80. uh, and, uh, um, it's just adding uh, the upgrade protocol with its classes. So now we're going to look a little more in details uh, how you configure a TSL, because this is, this is I think, quite important. Um, so here, uh, this is a, a normal Tomcat configuration to use a, a TSL. This is a, a using a, the NIO and uh, this is the, the two certificate I've provided. Uh, my Tomcat is running on local host and I have created some certificates uh, for it. Uh, I, you give it the uh, certificate file and the key. Uh, basically, once you've done that, you can test your Tomcat by connecting it to this port uh, using curl or whatever tool and then you can work on the uh, HTTPD piece and on the HTTPD piece, you will have uh, to uh, tell uh, that you're going to use the proxy engine and uh, you're going to, uh, of course, uh, if you make, if you use curl and you have make your own certificate, uh, you will have to use curl min with the parameter, the parameter minus CI uh, file equal, uh, where is your certificate uh, located, you see our certificate located. And there here in this example, I, I tell uh, it, uh, I tell HTTPD which uh, CR certificate to use, which in case is the one I have been using to sign my certificate. And you can have a, a simple uh, proxy pass. Uh, for example, here we pass proxy pass, proxy pass example. So anything which will start with example will go to the uh, Tomcat example uh, um, applications, well, uh, context. Um, and you need a proxy pass reverse, uh, you know, because you want to rewrite the uh, low, you will, you want to rewrite the local host to the, uh, to the name of the HTTP server, probably. And this is a local host example, but again, if you are using, uh, if you are encrypting the data, uh, you wouldn't be uh, so scared with it. We're going to look to something a little more complex. Uh, 
So imagine now you try to you try to access to this uh, you, you try to access to this uh, you use you access to this HTTPD, but you want to forward some uh, TSL information uh, to your application. For example, you want to print the certificate, uh, the client certificate sent by HTTPD. Even if you configure uh, HTTPD to send uh to ask the client to send its certificate there's here nothing that is going to be able to uh, to forward the certificate so you have to do something uh to tell uh to tell tomcat that he will have uh, to get this he will have to get the information uh somehow uh from the request uh httpd is doing to it so basically httpd is going to uh to read the information uh, and it's going to uh, put it in some headers and then uh, we will read those headers. How we do that? Um, so basically uh, in HTTPD, uh, uh, in Tomcat, we're going to use the SSL valve. The SSL valve is going to, to read some headers and is going to put the headers uh, as if uh, they were uh, sent directly uh, by, the by the browser or by the client to the Tomcat. In HTTPD, uh, you have to configure um, a bunch of things. Uh, you have to add some SSL options uh, to export the, uh, the standard environment and to export the certificate data. Uh, export the certificate data only if you really need it because it's a big uh, chunk of data and you might not uh, want to do something like that. Then you're going to use mode header uh, to add the uh, the variable you have exported, so you, you the variable you have exported, the standard of variable and the exported certificate, you're going to tell, uh, basically, to set some headers. Uh, basically, you're going to uh, ask it to set the uh, client set using the uh, SSL certificate things. You're going to uh, get uh, tell it to use the SSL cipher. Uh, and put the SSL cipher, read the SSL cipher and put the SSL cipher in the header. You also can uh, get the uh, SSL session ID, put it in the uh, header uh, SSL uh, session ID, and you can do the same uh, with the key size. Then the valve uh, will put those information in at the, at the right place in the uh, um, in the in the Tomcat, and then you're going to be in your application able to read them. So I'm going to show uh, uh, basically how these things is done. So now it's a it's a small demo. Um, so I have an HTTPD running which uh, been configured. I think I'm going to maximize this a bit. So you can read it. Just give me one sec. So uh, here we have defined a, a virtual host. Uh, we have tell it uh, this is a standard HTTP confirmation. Uh, here, my example are all running on local host, so it's. I'm also using here local host. So basically here, I tell HTTPD uh, to use uh, HTTPS. Um, I give it a CR certificate for the, any certificate I'm going to send it. I tell it to export the different things. I tell, I give the information for the request header. I'm going to require uh, SSL verify clients, which means when a browser or curl here in my example, in which I'm going to say, to show uh, is going to have to send a SSL certificate. And I have my proxy pass, basically my proxy pass and the example are going to go to the Tomcat uh, using HTTPS. So, um, trying to see where I am. Oh yeah, my screen is huge now. <laughs> Okay, I'm not seeing what I'm typing, now I'm seeing, so that's good. 
So uh, this is the HTTPD and I need to make this bigger. So basically I'm going, uh, I'm going to make it bigger. So yeah, uh, I'm going to use curl. I give it a uh, SA asset so that I uh, is going to be able to check uh, the Tomcat certificate. And I'm going to tell it to send a, a, a client certificate. Uh, I, so I, uh, this is the key, uh, this is the set. Um, and this is the URL, which is uh, the, uh, virtual, the virtual host I've configured uh, in HTTPD. And I'm going to uh, an example. And uh, my certificate is protected. And uh, this is the result. Basically, uh, you know, it's a Tomcat because it had created a, uh, the session ID and it had uh, read uh, from the information I was sending, it read the uh, certificate. I'm going to show what is in this example uh, uh, here. So uh, this is um, a very short example of how you use the, um, uh, how you can use the, set, the well, yeah, it's the client certificate, but you can use any of the SSL uh, stuff. They are all uh, uh, containing names that you can recognize easily. Uh, I'm running a Tomcat uh, 10, so I'm using the, the uh, Jakarta servlet um, instead of the Javax. Um, um, so I'm getting the certificate, and if the certificate is there, I'm going to uh, read the principle out of it and printing it, which is what you've seen. And uh, then I'm going to show you the Tomcat. Um, ah. So in the Tomcat, I have defined the connector, uh, which is auth config uh, with the certificates. And um, uh, basically, this just defined a, a Tomcat a Tomcat running using SSL running on that port. And uh, if you if you go a bit further, I have add the SSL valve. Yeah, you have the SSL valve, and you can curl the Tomcat. Uh, this was not going to the Tomcat. I have somewhere curl to the Tomcat. So that's not to the Tomcat. Right. And let's go to the Tomcat, which is on eight. And oh, of course, this this is directly to the Tomcat, and I am not sending a certificate here. Um, uh, returning to the to if there's any questions and uh, to the presentation. So um, basically, the example I've put the example of my uh, in, in my GitHub. So you can have a look there and uh, pick the example if you need it. And I have time for question and. Uh, showing extra uh, stuff if you want. Are there any questions? It seems uh, well, it's getting dark where I am, and uh... <laughs> oh yeah, this. Uh, so the question is that uh, Elabot, what do you mean no upgrade for a GP? Uh, well, <laughs> that's that's in case we are proxying. Uh, that's uh, I how to say that? I mean. Uh, basically, uh, uh, 
Ähm, Basically, the uh, NGP protocol uh, does not allow, allow us to make something like the upgrade protocol uh, you can do uh, to upgrade to H2. Basically, you can't upgrade to... Uh... Well, no, no, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a good time to ask the question. <laughs> uh, so, but basically, the, uh, the H2... Uh, Exactly. Chris is answering the question in a more easy way. I was trying to uh, speak about the H2 protocol, but for example, you, you can't do WebSocket. You can't do any other protocol when you're using AGP. AGP only allows you to do AGP, and it only allows, only allows you to do uh, what is defined in the protocol. I hope that answered the question. Any other questions? Any other detail uh, I can show you? So I guess I give you back some minutes. All right. Indeed, that is just a few minutes. Thank you very much, Jean Frederic. Uh, if anybody else has any other questions, please post them in here now. Uh, otherwise, uh, I'd like to remind you that in a couple of minutes, uh, again, in another session, Mark Thomas will be delivering his presentation on debugging complex issues in web applications. Jean Frederic, thank you very much.